So we know that this regression line is the best possible line that we can fit through the data. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's a very good line. It could be that if x and y aren't very strongly related to one another, that even though we can find the best line through the data, it still might be a very lousy fit, meaning it might produce residuals that are still very, very large. So we want to use the residuals to quantify the goodness of fit of our model, of our regression equation. And the goodness of fit st statistic is called the coefficient of determination, and we write it as r squared. Sometimes you'll see it as capital R squared. I actually prefer to write it as little r squared, which reminds us that it's somehow related to the correlation statistic, the Pearson correlation statistic. Well, the coefficient of, de of determination, or the r squared, quantifies how well a regression line fits the scatter plot. It can be interpreted as the proportion of the total variance in y that is explained by the regression model. So I want you to think back to when we learned about ANOVA. And with ANOVA, we were partitioning the variance, the total sum of squares, into between sum and squares and within group sum, and sum of squares. And we came up with a F statistic for ANOVA based on a partitioning of variance. We're going to do the same thing in regression analysis. So we're going to partition the total variance in the dependent variable into the amount of variance that's explained by the regression model and the amount of variance that's left over, that sits in the residuals or the error terms of the regression model. So the variance of y is going to be measured with the total sum of squares. And the total sum of squares is decomposed into the residual or error sum of squares and another quantity called the regression sum of squares. We're going to use res SS as the residual sum of squares and reg SS as the regression sum of squares and TSS for the total sum of squares. I'm going to, I want you to be clear on this now because if you go to look up regression analysis on the internet or in different books, different books are going to use different shorthand notation to refer to the different variance components. So the total sum of squares is just the total variability of all the observed values of the dependent variable. So for our sample of observations, our, I, our n observations, we are just going to take the sum of the squared deviances of our y data. And that's the total sum of squares. We've seen this many times over. Just the sum of yi minus y bar squared. So graphically, yi minus y bar is the difference between the observed value of y and the mean of y. So it has the quantity yi minus y bar has a length of this. It's the difference between yi and the mean, which in this case is 50. So each of our observed yi's is contributing some amount to the total sum of squares. If yi is beneath the mean, so these val oh, I'm sorry, I drew the wrong lines. In all of these cases, we're subtracting the mean. So we're looking at the difference between the observed value and the mean. And just keep in mind that values down here below the mean, so anything below the mean, these are going to be negative differences. Because yi minus 50 will be a negative number, and these ones up here will be positive. But when we square them, because TSS equals the sum of squared differences, these negatives and positives go away. And we're just dealing with a positive value, which is the total sum of squares.